Hello everyone, this is our microscope calibration video. And this is for both 2420 and 2421. We will be doing a bit of editing and we'll be taking a look and showing you how to calibrate a microscope. Uh, when you do this in person, you would do it on a microscope to microscope basis. For us, we'll tell you what to assume for your calibration factor, or we'll tell you to assume the calibration factor you calculate here. The goal of this slideshow is to properly calibrate your microscope, to determine the calibration factors of your microscope, which are the CFs, and to use the calibration factors to determine cell size. They do have results on OneDrive. I would, if I were you, keep those nearby. They might help you in seeing what it actually would look like in a practical sense. I do have some pictures in the slideshow that we'll take a look at, but they're not exactly what you have. Now, what is a calibration factor? A calibration factor is a multiplier for your slide based on the power of magnification. Let's think about it, shall we? As I said in the microscopy video, we're looking down through the microscope and you have your slide, then you have your nose piece with your revolving turret. That turret has the different uh, objectives on it, and each objective has its own power. And then you have your eyepiece objectives as well. What actually changes size? Do we take the, uh, <laughs> the bacteria, which we'll say our bacteria is a micron in size, micron long. Do we take that and make it the size of a desk? No, but that's, it might seem a little, uh, you know, hyperbolic there, but what we're doing when we look through a microscope is we're actually changing our perception of what we see. The actual size of the bacteria does not shift, but our perception of the size does. That means that we need a way that when we're going through all of our sizes, we need a way to be able to calculate the actual size of the organism so that we can compare size of the organism across different microscopes and different objective powers. And this is what I just said, just in text form. So you will need a stage micrometer for this. Were you in the lab, we'd be giving you a stage micrometer. If you wish to come into the lab and try to calibrate one of our scopes, we will give you a stage micrometer. I personally prefer to keep my ocular micrometer above my stage micrometer, and you'll see in a few of the pictures coming up exactly what I mean by that. Align the left-hand side of your ocular and stage micrometers, and you want to choose a secondary arbitrary point on the stage micrometer. You want to count the number of spaces on the ocular micrometer to arrive at that point. You want to count the number of spaces on the stage micrometer to arrive at that point. Make note of both numbers and use a formula, which is in the next slide, to determine the calibration factor, and you repeat for each power. For instance, this is our formula. The number of calibration factor at low power is the number of spaces in the stage micrometer in the numerator the number of spaces in the ocular micrometer as your denominator and all multiplied by 10. Why, keep in mind, do we multiply by 10? Keep that in mind as we go forward. Now here is an idealized version. Here's our random line here at the beginning. Here is our line here. Now if we take a look, each of these has a small little space in them. Just because I've done this a lot, I don't know if that's 5 there, so that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, we'll say 47 here for the ocular, and then here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12. So 47 over 12 times 10. Go ahead and calculate that out. This is an idealized example. So here, 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 here. It is not actually what we would do in practice. This is what we do in practice. Now keep in mind how things are changing here. What is actually changing size? And again, we're looking down through the microscope. So if we have 
here is our stage. We have up here is our nose piece. We have here is the tube, and up here is the ocular. That's sort of the generalized version of a microscope. If I change the nose piece, does that change my ocular? That is the first question. Second question, if I change the nose piece, does that change the perceived size of the stage? That matters. Now, I'm giving you the power here. This is under 40 times power. And let me take out my little annotate thing here. And we're going to start annotating. Let's choose an arbitrary point right here. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to count the number of spaces on the ocular. Again, this is five right here. It's hard to see. It'll be easier to see in the next one that we go to. So this is five, 10, 15, 20. And then check down here. It's one, two, three, four, five. So that means our ocular is 20 and our stage is five. Keep that in mind for the next one. Here's the next one. This one is at 100 times. And uh, notice how I tried to line this up as good as I could. The size of the ocular, which is this section here, hasn't changed. Now on here, which is our 40 times, we went with this section here. Right there. On the next one, we're going to go to that same area. At 100 times, though, that same area is, let me pull my annotation, this. So on our stage, we still have five. But how many on our ocular? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. What has changed? The perceived size of what's on the stage. So because that is what has changed, we need a way to measure. Because if I simply measure this same size, that is a vastly different raw number. And that's where your calibration factor comes into place. So let's do the math then. Our ocular is 50. Our stage is 5. So that's 50 over 5. Then multiply that by 10. And what is the size of what we see on the stage? Now, for your wet mount or your smear prep, which this is in lab, a basic protocol, you'd make your wet mount or smear prep, observe it 40, determine cell shape, count the number of spaces in the ocular micrometer it occupies, then determine the cell size, which is in this PowerPoint and page 14 of your handout, because you need to figure out exactly how to use the calibration factor. Draw what you see, always draw what you see, and you want to increase power and repeat for steps for 100 times under oil immersion. For a wet mount, if you're doing a wet mount this week, you want to transfer a single drop of culture from the stock tube to a slide, hover your cover slip at a 45 degree angle, and slowly drop covering the sample. And we did use uh, Saccharomyces cervizae, which is baker's yeast. There are two videos up on YouTube one which you hear my dulcet tones, the other which you don't. So if you're like me and don't like how nasally my voice is, you can simply watch the microscope portion of it as I increase in power. If you, for some reason, do like my nasally Midwest voice, you can listen to me give commentary over that video. Now this is an example of what you might see at 40 power, with this here being a cell, and you want to measure that using your micrometer. Here is another version. Uh, this one is at 100 times power. 
And as you can see, there's a cell here, and you might want to figure out how much that is. Keep in mind that for those of you who are using a wet mount this week, you will have a separate sheet on OneDrive with the results. Use those, not this. This is simply for uh, your knowledge and to see how some of these might work. That goes for those who are using uh, bacteria. I haven't decided what bacteria you're using yet. So uh, probably something similar to this. Uh, this is a Sarcina Orantieca at uh, under oil immersion. So you tell me what this, the, my, the, the size is, what we're supposed to be using here. Um, if it's under oil immersion, which objective power are we using and what is the calibration factor? You should be able to identify that simply from being told that it's oil immersion. And this is some Bacillus megatarium, a nice rod under the same oil immersion. 